we have tried to uh, work with these companies and, and tell them our, our, the problems that we have and, and why we think that our political views should be allowed, but uh, they don't seem to listen. And uh, so we've, we've just come up with a bill. We're going to make them uh, aware of it. And they, they're out, they are already aware. They're hiring uh, lobbyists. Hello, everyone. I'm Brandon Lewis, founder of the Tennessee Conservative. Today, Dennis Powers, District 36 State Representative for Campbell and part of Union in Anderson's County, joins us to talk about his bill to end social media censorship by big tech and the volunteer state. He is the chair of the Banking and Consumer Affairs Committee and is a member of the Commerce, Insurance, and Transportation Committees. He is also vice chair of the Republican Caucus and has deep roots in his community with extensive community involvement. Powers has received many accolades for his conservative record from the American Conservative Union and Americans for Prosperity, both good organizations. Dennis received his BS uh, in business administration at the University of Tennessee and resides in Jacksboro, where he works as an insurance agent and is married to his lovely wife, Tracy. Dennis, welcome to the program. Thank you, Brandon. It's an honor to be here. Well, we tell us, here. say that one more time. We keep up with you regularly, so and oh, really I'm so sorry. Like, like I, like I tell, uh, there's some folks that I interview who like our publication, and then there are others up there who uh, dislike <laughs> our publication, and I can't help it. As long as it's conservative policy, we we're good. Uh, we're good with it, and uh, and we forget things very quickly and move on to the next thing. It's just policy <laughs> by policy. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what made you sponsor this bill on social media censorship and why you think it solves a problem uh, for Tennessee conservatives. Well, we've seen so many people uh, get deplatformed or the shadow banning that's going on. We've even seen our former president. Uh, there's no end to what they will do. And so we have tried to uh, work with these companies and, and tell them our, our, the problems that we have and, and why we think that our political views should be allowed, but um, they don't, seem to listen and uh so we've we just come up with a bill we're going to make them uh, aware of it and they they're out they are already aware they're hiring uh lobbyists we've talked to several of those now so i know that they this is in on the radar and they're looking what we're doing in tennessee and it's just i think a great uh, way to approach it in a way that we can work other states have tried it but I think uh, Senator Watson and I have come up maybe with an idea that, that will work and hold, and be whole constitutional muster to. Well, that's good. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different angles. Obviously, there's the free speech angle. The one that I try to talk to legislators about is simply the fact that social media is now one of, if not the biggest tool in state and local campaigns. And so if you can't use that tool uh, to express your views and opinions from a tactical and practical standpoint, I used to work on campaigns. Uh, you have more than one hand tied behind your back, and uh, it is a self-defeating uh, prophecy not to nip this stuff in the bud. Because uh, if, if we don't, we're already behind the eight ball. We need to get out in front of this a little bit for the sake of our own candidates. So, right. tell me, uh, what does this bill do specifically as it relates to the idea of common carriage? Not everybody understands what that means. So, tell people what it means and why you took this approach for the sake of surviving what will be an inevitable legal challenge. Well, the common carrier provision actually came from um, a, a court opinion and Justice Thomas that he opined in this opinion that was Biden versus the First Night Institute. Uh, I don't have that in front of me, but I just remember that Justice Thomas talked about common carrier might be the only provision. And he even mentioned other companies that they had applied this to in the past, like the uh, telegraph companies, telephone companies and listed them as common carriers. So there is a public accommodation there that they have to provide for us because we are not doing anything illegally. And there's a, I'm sure you're familiar with the rule 230 that they keep talking about. And that allows them to ban certain things, you know, if it's a criminal activity, if something illegal, if it's a pornography or something lewd, anything like that, they're allowed to ban that. But there is no provision in there for uh, banning a political viewpoint or political expressions. 
And I've even talked to him about, you know, if we had made the comment a year ago that the vaccinations don't work, we would have been probably banned or at least temporarily. Or And now we know that they don't work completely. You know, I had a vaccination, went through a booster, everything still got uh, COVID, you know, and, and recovered from it, didn't have a real bad reaction. But we, we know that things like that, that were banned for a political viewpoint. And um, we, we just want to stop that. We want to make sure that everybody, especially conservatives, and you know, really, Brandon, it, this should be a bipartisan bill because there's going to be a day when liberals get banned for what they believe in too. And so it needs to be a, a support from all sides of the, of the aisle, I believe. Well, one thing that has always disappointed me, um, for whatever reason, I think if you're involved in state or local politics or if you have an interest in it, you're a little weird uh, and because there's no economic benefit, as me and you have discussed, to doing civic duty. It's like it is complete duty uh, unless you're going to get some benefit from it. Now, one side tends to get a little bit more benefit than the other. But I remember when I was growing up, uh, liberals were very, very hot and heavy, uh, including the ACLU about free speech. I mean, you, you, you tried to censor, ban, dis- anything. Everything was all open for discussion. And now there's been, in just about 10, 15 years, there's been this weird 180 where they are all about uh, shutting people down, canceling people um, in all forms of life and platform, shaming them for, yeah. for things that really were not controversial even five years ago. So I recently interviewed Bo Watson on this, as well as James Taylor of the Heartland Institute. Uh, however, um, they're not the only people in the mix on this, as you mentioned. Uh, what is big tech doing uh, to kill this bill before it ever has a chance to become law? And in your opinion, how are your colleagues um, re- responding to these uh, out-of-staters in their $10,000 suits? Yes, well, they've hired several lobbyists. You know, we've been contacted by pretty much all of the uh, large tech companies by lobbyists. They, they keep quoting that they're already under Rule 230 that they're already allowed to do this. But we have gone back and looked at Rule 230. It does not include political viewpoints, political speech, unless they were in some way harmful or illegal, you know, some kind of illegal activity. So that, that's one thing that they talk about. They also talk about, well, it's a, a free market. So if you want to start a, uh, your own platform and start your own company, then you can do that. And then you can do whatever you want to. If you want to ban liberal viewpoints, you can do that. Well, the fact of the matter is they, they control 97% of the market right now. So they're, they're technically a, a monopoly. And so we really don't have that option of a free market. And, since they are a public accommodation, then that's why they would fall into the common carrier law. So that's what we're doing right now. And they are contacting everybody on the committee. And I think everybody is pretty well with us. I mean, they understand because they know that they could be deplatformed at any time. So I think everybody on the committee is on board. There's some things that we had to work out with amendments and trying to make sure that we're not affecting or but this, the ramifications of it does not hit some companies that we're not trying to hit, you know, that we're, that we're not really worried about, that don't really. Uh, so there are some technical amendments to it. And then we have another amendment, too, that you and I have talked about before that's coming up pretty soon. We're trying to get rid. There's a fiscal note on it, about $330,000. So we're trying to end, figure out a way to get around that. And we may have, working with uh, Samantha Fillmore of the Heartland Institute, we may have come up with a way to to reduce that or eliminate it anyway. And if we can do that, it will really help uh, give this bill a lot better chance to pass. Go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com and hit that red support button. When you do that, we will send you a proud Tennessee conservative bumper sticker. Also, we will send you a Don't California My Tennessee bumper sticker, a directory of your state uh, officials in the House and the Senate, that puppy right there. And if you should give $50 or more, you will get this proud Tennessee conservative Tumblr. Well, let's talk about, um, well, first of just the comment, like they said, oh, well, you can start your own platform, but they started Parler and then big tech turned their servers off. They turned the app providers off. And so I think that rings really hollow considering what they did previously. And Facebook and, and Twitter didn't stand up for Parler. They didn't say, oh no, this is not right. Uh, we say, we keep repeating this old saw 
that uh, you can start your own. And it's completely uh, the opposite. In fact, there is a monopoly. There are only a few portals to entry. And that's why I, I hope uh, what you do catches fire in other conservative states. And that's probably what they're worried about. This is one of those uh, in the Bible, you know, kill all, kill all the, the infant boys uh, <laughs> before they have, before, before they grow up when Herod yeah. sent out to eat it. And this is, this is very much like this. We got to find the child uh, in Tennessee to make sure that other, other states don't get the courage to do this. So talk about the A, what I'd call an if then statement. It's got the fiscal note. Maybe maybe we can get rid of it, or maybe it can be reduced, or maybe it stays the same. And it's a little wonky, but kind of walk through what happens uh, should there be a fiscal note attached to this, and in, in which committee would it go in front of, and would that committee, if, if they are led by Republicans, would they be open to the idea of having free speech as it relates to uh, that fiscal note, even if it does cost some money? Yeah, well, most bills go through, anytime they have a physical note, I like that, uh, they go through, if we pass it through the subcommittee, full committee uh, in the House, and then it would actually go to finance. And at that point, it would go to the finance subcommittee, and they would uh, probably put it, most notes like that, it happens to go behind the budget. And so they, they look at the budget, and uh, the people on the finance committees and everything looking at it, because they have to make sure, you know, we have a balanced budget and which is great in the state of Tennessee. So they're looking at uh, the amount of money that they have left over that can be spent on, on different things. So it, it's a kind of an ad hoc committee with the, with the finance committee that looks at these different bills and puts them together and gives them priority to, to be. Uh, so I, I think we get that far. If we can get the note down where it's not so large, I think we have a really good shot at doing it. We've even come up with a way that to take it out of the Public Utility Commission and put it maybe in the Attorney General's office. And that's the new amendment that we have. And if we do that, they already have an advocate, consumer advocate group set up there. And we might be able to completely eliminate the note by doing that. And that's the one that, that we're getting ready to add on for next week. Well, that sounds good. And it sounds like ultimately, and that this is, I may be uh, saying this and it may be complete uh, conjecture, uh, but it seems like ultimately the attorney general's office would be the one uh, that would be defending all of this. And so to have them involved with the process early may or may not help as they move down the road. I don't know. Sure. And, and take it in a way of giving people the private right to action to private cause for action and giving them more ability to do that and to file the complaints themselves rather than going through the utility commission. We think that might be a route that we're able to go and uh, completely, maybe a completely eliminate the note if possible. And that, that will really help it get through the, you know, the whole process about the budget and everything. Cause we have to make sure, and I understand we, we've got to have a balanced budget. We just can't pass. There's so many people, there's 7 million people in Tennessee and, and a lot of them want something out of the budget and there's not enough to accommodate everybody even though we have a surplus which is great and uh but a lot of it's already been appropriated and a lot of it's going to be put in a rainy day funds so we, we want to make sure we do it a fiscally responsible way but we want to make sure that we're going to protect free speech and the first amendment well I'm, I'm zoned in a school that is so bad, I can't send my kids to it. I have two kids. That's $22,000 a year for 10 years. That's $220,000 I'll never take out of the public school budget. So you can take my tax dollars and put it toward the 330. Maybe we can get that puppy paid down by a third. So Brandon Lewis is donating his, his kid's uh, education. He's going to private school them. Don't worry about him. That's 220 grand. Y'all can do whatever you want to uh, with. So, uh, Tell us a little bit uh, about how people can support this bill, be aware of it. If, if you're out there, I mean, it, as you mentioned, um, you know, there's, this is something that is a, a big issue in, in conservative thought. They even fact, they even fact check jokes. Yes. Jokes. They fact check jokes. Unbelievable. I know. It is. I mean, I never thought in my lifetime when I took, and I've said this to, to Bo, when I took Alabama civics, uh, and I've been here 20 some odd years now, but um, like it was such a big deal. And it was like it was it was taught in civics class, like the importance of free speech. I never thought we would be that the, the largest platform for political speech, which is now social media, that, I, that you'd have to worry. Well, if I, if I post this joke, 
am I going to be shut down? A joke. If I, if I say that maybe something, something health related, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like they, um, they don't trust the American public to make decisions and to know what's real and what isn't. Um, it's, it's amazing. So if people wanted to, to help with this, Dennis, in some way, what's the most practical, effective way they could do that? The best way is to contact uh, your, your state representative and, and your state senator and tell them that you support the bill. Um, also, especially important are people in the, on the committees that it's going to go through, both in the Senate and then in the House, go through business and utilities, and then on to commerce. So getting it through those two committees, if we can do that, you know, we've got a really good shot of getting this passed. We've been working on amendments to make everybody, you know, we're, we're trying to do it and, and not affect people that, that are not really related to what we're talking about, the right to free speech. I mean, I'll give you an example. We had, we had to take out a, a group that actually does the, because it wasn't really going to affect them the way it was set up, but we had to take them out and they actually do a lot of the payroll and stuff for state employees and everything like that. But this bill is going to affect them. So we've had to be working on these technical amendments, but people on that committee contacting them and contacting people on the Commerce Committee, contacting your state rep, state senator, wherever you live in the state will really help. Just let them know that you support the bill and that you're behind it. And uh, we, we look at emails, we look at phone calls, look at letters, especially if somebody handwrites a note or a letter, those are really important too. Well, thank you very much for working on this. Uh, Mr. Powers, uh, you've been kind with your time. We thank you for uh, fighting for your constituents back in the district. Uh, social media is the new town hall. Uh, we can't allow just a few leftist corporations to shut it down. If we want to elect conservative candidates uh, and if we want to advance conservative causes, we, we, we cannot be uh, thrown back to 1998 uh, because we sit, sit around and, and let a few folks in San Francisco and New York and other places control the speech in Tennessee. Uh, so if you want more stories about this, uh, if you want to uh, learn more about what is going on uh, with Mr. Powers and Mr. Watson uh, and these bills in the House and the Senate, please to go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com. We're going to cover this uh, every inch of the way across the finish line. And you can also go to wherever you subscribe to podcasts to hear this. Uh, just search for TennesseeConservativeNews.com if you like this and other programs about conservatism in Tennessee. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Powers, for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm Brandon Lewis. Until next time, I'm signing off.